creativity and uniqueness, it should come as no surprise that people from Portland, Oregon are in love with chickens. Yes, you heard me right, chickens. Growing Gardens, a local Portland nonprofit, is planting seeds for good food, healthy people, and strong communities. For the past four years, Growing Gardens has sponsored the Tour de Coops. The tour provides an opportunity to see the backyard chicken coops of those urban farmers raising chickens. The coops range from simple A-frames to full-on cottages with septic systems. Local author Barbara Kalarski was so enthralled with raising chickens in the city, she wrote a book called Keep Chickens, Tending Small Flocks in Cities, Suburbs, and Other Small Spaces. Barbara offers a unique perspective on raising chickens in the urban environment. I wrote a book about raising chickens in the city because there was no other book out there at that time just like that. At first people thought my idea was a little bit bird-brained, but then after that it, it, it caught on at, uh, at, at egg-breaking speed, actually. I was really surprised at how large metropolitan areas uh, responded to the book. Uh, uh, chickens have typically been associated with uh, rural and farm life, and actually they were marginalized to that role as uh, uh, supermarkets came in in the 1950s and 60s. It didn't typically be that. It wasn't that way before, because everything was rural before the 50s and 60s, and everybody had hens in their backyard. It was normal to have a kitchen garden and a few garden hens to provide the house with uh, fresh eggs and, in some instances, meat. Well, I have three chickens, and we never refer to them as chickens. We call them the girls or the ladies. Uh, the three that we have are uh, the Gabor sisters, because they're both Plymouth Rocks. They're a matching breed, so we call them Eva and Zsa Gabor. And then we also have a black chicken that we call Whoopi, for Whoopi Goldberg. Uh, I used to have a red one called Lucille Ball, but Lucille Ball was a, a prolific layer and she had laid over 700 eggs in two years, and I think she was just exhausted, and, and she passed on early in, in, our, in, our, in our coop. There's a, a wonderful bond that happens with chickens and with any pets, actually. Uh, once you name it, you love it, because people ask me, how come I don't eat my chickens? Well, I don't eat them because they're my girls. I raised them from baby chicks, just the same way you would as a puppy or a kitten, and through that, there's, of course, a maternal pet bonding that goes on. So uh, I've known my chickens for six years now, since they were chicks. Uh, and the bond is, well, for them, I can't speak for them. I think their bond to me is primarily based on food. But my bond to them is more because they give me comfort. Local resident Matt Kolbecker offers another perspective on raising chickens. Matt raised Lacey, Ari, and Goldie from baby chicks. Unfortunately, Goldie experienced some difficulty when it came time to lay her we first had egg. Chickens for about six months, and it came time for them to lay their first eggs. And Goldie was the first to to lay an egg, and the the egg she couldn't pass the egg, so it got caught. It, it almost looked as if the egg had started growing in the, the lining of the uterine tube. So when the egg came out, it was caught in this patch of skin, and it just kind of hung there. So we talked to a vet to see how much it would cost to, to cut this egg out, and the vet said something like $250, and there's also no guarantee that the chicken's going to live. Um, you know, and when you have a three dollar investment in something, you don't want to spend to operate on that. So, uh, and the other thing was she wouldn't be able to lay for the rest of her life. So, I figured, well, time to kill the chicken, because it's easy enough. You know, you hear the stories about people killing chickens. You just spin the head one way and the body the other, and and then the chicken's dead. It's that easy. So I thought, well, we'll just do this. We taken Goldie and put her in her own little uh, cage in the garage where it was warm for her and she could kind of sit, you know, for a couple days just to uh, see if that would help 
settle her down or if there would be any developments if she could somehow pass that egg. And that wasn't working, so came time to, to kill her and uh, yeah, it's it's weird killing a living thing with your bare hands. You know, I didn't think there would be any type of attachment between me and, and Goldie. I mean, all this time it was like, well, it's just a chicken. But still, you know, when you when you raise something from the time it's six days old and you're going in every night to check if it's pasting up and whatnot, it, a bond does form. So, um, yeah, so I turned her head one way and the body the other. And, I mean, it was messy, you know. It wasn't as easy as everybody said. I, I mean, after I killed Goldie, uh, Everything changed with the other chickens because there was kind of this realization that this isn't really all fun and games or a fun, neat little project anymore. Life circumstances changed for Matt with the birth of his first child. Matt had to find a new forever home for his chickens. Luckily, there's a farmer in outer southwest Portland who takes in urban chickens. Chickens in, in January 2007. I just time really to be taking care of the chickens and feeding them and cleaning out their coop and and that kind of stuff. I don't really miss my chickens. I mean, uh, I, I really think that after having to put uh, Goldie down, that changed my relationship with them. And I kind of put up a wall where I'm not going to get attached to any of the other chickens, that type of thing. It was a pretty easy decision when it came to it. The reason it was so easy is because I was moving the chickens to a better place. Uh, one of the secretaries that I work with had about 20 hens and in a large field. Uh, so we, uh, that secretary at work had offered to, to take our chickens and at that point, well, this, it's a no-brainer really. They did pretty well in the pecking order too. I'm proud of them. They're pretty high up there. Well, that's our story, folks. Raising chickens in the city can be both a rewarding and challenging experience. We hope you've enjoyed a glimpse of little chickens in the big city.